Well, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. Uh, welcome to another edition of Facebook Live here at Select Sires. Uh, my name is Kevin Jorgensen, uh, along with my colleague Rick Verbeek, and we're here this afternoon to give you some updates of what happened with the sire summaries this week. Um, certainly here to answer any questions that uh, you as a group may have, but uh, we'll be here for the next 45 minutes, to 50 minutes, 55 minutes, however long it takes to uh, bring you up to speed on what happened with this week's sire summaries. The good news I have to report is that there wasn't a lot of change in the industry in terms of anything, formulas, updates. Uh, so if you saw changes in bulls, we can be pretty confident that that was a data change with additional daughters um, and movements uh, based upon that, uh, both up and down. But the good news is, is there was a lot more up than down here in our shop this week, and we're really, really pleased with, with the results to share with you today. So we'll get some other stats as we go through the, those uh, types of uh, statistics in the next few minutes. But uh, Rick, I'm going to turn it over to you. And you can, we have four proven bulls that we just felt really had shining days. Wanted to talk to you about those first. So Rick, take it away and renegade. Well, thanks, Kevin. And as you mentioned, uh, uh, some really nice ups uh, in terms of daughter data for us this week. And the renegade is definitely one of those bulls that uh, is the shining star of the breed. Now, number two overall proven bull in the top 100 uh, TPI list and a bull that just really has done everything that we've been seeing and saying uh, for the better part of six months at this point. Uh, bullet went up over 200 pounds of milk to get back over a thousand of milk. He went up uh, four pounds of fat and seven pounds of protein to really help solidify you know, his genetic standing. Uh, he's been a hugely popular bull for us for since his introduction uh, as a young bull in our uh, G-Force lineup in, in uh, next gen programs. Bull now with 275 daughters, it just stamps out such a consistent pattern day in and day out. Uh, uh, beautiful uttered cows, uh, some strength, some substance, uh, tremendous foot and legged cattle as well, uh, plus over a, a point on his foot and leg composite, over a point and a half on his utter composite. And a bull that just does so many things right. A uh, unique pedigree bull that allows him to be utilized uh, all over uh, the world on different populations. He's an outcross bull. It complements Frazzled, Duke, Helix, some big time bulls in our program. And uh, when you look at that linear profile, uh, add some size and strength, great udders. He improves teat length. And you can see that in these daughter pictures just Tremendous high, wide, voluminous rear udders. The teats are under the, the quarters where they belong. Um, the mobil mobility and legs are where they belong. And just a, a bull that's going to be one of the all-time greats and just uh, so happy to see that official proof mirror what we've been seeing out in the field. Absolutely. And I think the best way to describe him, what I've said to most folks in the last several months, is he's a generational sire. Uh, when you're that different pedigree to work on the population, his sons will have a huge influence. So really, really exciting that this bull is is truly the real deal. And we feel really good about his standing and what he's going to do for the for the program and more importantly for our customers uh, across the globe. Second bull I'll talk about that had a major, major league day is 7H14454 Lionel. And you're going to hear more about this bull as we go through the presentation today. But a bull, again, that we saw some pretty impressive statistics on the bull, graduated in August, uh, was a big-time production bull, uh, continues to do that, uh, up in all uh, aspects of production, now over 2,500 pounds of milk, one of the high combined fat protein bulls of the breed at 194, uh, but is now the number four TPI bull in the breed. He's uh, one of the highest bulls in the breed for net merit, cheese merit, uh, no matter how you slice this bull out, he's a major, major league production bull. Uh, the interesting thing on this is he kind of blends into what we try to do here at Select Sires, and that is it isn't so much about the ranks or the lists and those come and go in a week. I mean, you as producers buy bulls based on their traits and what they're going to do and how they're going to perform. And one of the statements that we make in this in this shop is, is about, or at least I do all the time, is about plant get. Plant potatoes get potatoes. If you use something, you, you probably can expect a result. And when I look at the way Lionel's bred, he's a frazzled from a Montrose, from a Super Sire, from a Massey, from an Oman. So in terms of his pedigree, 
He's got some of the most dominant production sires in the in the breed backing up his pedigree, and that's what they do. But uh, as you look at the daughters, uh, these are a bunch that have been pictured since the proofs, one in Iowa, one in the art program, uh, one at Mystic Valley in the bottom right there, just got done here about 10 days ago. Um, they're solid, solid cows that are going to make a lot of production, going to work very well on, on, on a lot of different cows out there. And, and so I just find this bull uh, very appealing, you know, that you can put them on a bull like Heisenberg or, or Yoder. And he's going to do some things really, really right. And uh, and the good news is he's got a fairly substantial uh, influence in the program. Uh, we've got several sons uh, in the G-Force lineup, and and some of those we even added back in because they had marvelous, marvelous days. So with the big increase in this bull, I think uh, really, really exciting. And anything else you got to add on Lionel, Rick? I mean, you've seen him several as well. No, I mean, like you commented, he's bred to be a – Big time production bull is yield deviations. We we said in in August that this bull had some upward climb to him because his yield deviations were so far above his proof, and that actually is the same way again today. It's hard to believe this bull could go up some more, but these cows are flat out wet, and uh, you know he's a bullet had some nice contributions then throughout our program with his influence uh, as a sire and as a maternal grandsire. Um, that's just really really nice to see this bull solidify himself with with more daughter data. And I'd say the same thing on a slightly different front, more the fitness king would be 14H, uh, 14220 Riveting. Top 10 TPI bull again, held his position, added a lot of data, now over 300 daughters. Uh, I've had the question from a lot of folks last nine, 10 months, so who's your favorite frazzled son? Because obviously we have a lot of them. This one might be right at the top of my list. As a daughter group, since early on last winter, uh, started seeing some of the first daughters calving. They were impressive. They're sound uttered cows. Uh, it doesn't surprise me at all that his fitness traits are as good as they are. You can see him highlighted there. He's a great cell score bull. He's a mastitis resistance pro bull. Maybe the poster child for that with those type of statistics of being so good in all three of those. He's A2A2. This bull just doesn't have many holes in him. And again, uh, comes by naturally. His mother was a great, great cow. Came out of the SSI program. She was a, a profit daughter, uh, lived in a commercial freestyle setting, 187 points, a good cow, goes back. There's a man -a man behind that Rogers. So it's just been a really good cow family for a long time. And these daughters look impressive. And again, the one that's uh, right next to the trait block there, that's another one from Mystic Valley, just got pictured. The one in the top, uh, Top right-hand corner, that's uh, Caviar's full sister out in California, and she's just a whale of a cow, and then so is her mother. And so, you know, just a bull that uh, solidified his position, probably one of my favorite for riveting sons, but again, a bull that's got sons in the program, and that's always important to these proven bulls that when these bulls hit, it solidifies the future, and that's what I like about riveting. Well, another bullet had a great day that we absolutely want to mention is is Luster P. Uh, Luster P is gaining ground and in, in, on my all time favorite list uh, very very rapidly. He added uh, nearly 650 daughters to his production proof. He now has over 300 daughters classified, um, and this bull is just doing a tremendous job. Uh, it's over 1,200 pounds of milk. You see the high uh, type and utter composite. He is one of the highest type bulls. Uh, that is positive on milk in the entire breed as well. Uh, needless to say, the pole gene, he is the highest proven pole bull in the industry. And uh, he's been a great fertility bull for his entire career. He maintains that standard. Uh, he, he gives you the A2 uh, beta casein, which so many people are selecting for. Uh, but this bull is just gaining respect uh, day in and day out. You see those beautiful daughter pictures, uh, that high wide rear udder once again, uh, a bullet again adds a little bit of length to teat, the teat length and, and teats that are centrally placed under the quarters. Um, he is uh, gaining ground as one of the high, my all time favorite bulls. And um, he's, he's doing it the hard way, the old fashioned way by earning that respect. And, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about Doc on these presentations uh, over the last uh, several proof rounds. Uh, Luster P is right there in that same elite category for outstanding confirmation, solid production, good wellness traits. 
He's a bull that uh, is probably going to do us a lot of good as a maternal grandsire. Uh, we didn't have as much success as we would have liked as a sire of sons. We do have um, a nice, nice luster pea son uh, born in January that should have semen here in the spring. That's homozygous polled, uh, 2765 uh, on his TPI, a bull called the uh, Amen. And then, uh, but we look at uh, what we have coming. We do have Luster P. We have 13 grandsons. We're uh, sons out of Luster P daughters, uh, most of which are polled or homozygous polled. Uh, some of those are up to three and a half points on type. I think the highest one is uh, over 2950 on TPI. So he's going to be another bull that uh, we love what he does. We love what he is and what he's doing, uh, but also going to have a very nice contribution to our future program. Uh, through his sons and grandsons. So uh, uh, just a, had a great day all the way around with those positive increases and um, 22 on the TPI list, uh, 33rd on utter composite, uh, 22 on the overall type list. So uh, just an awesome, awesome bull that we uh, are very, very excited about him and his future. Yeah, this is a bull that people ask about all the time and say, is he as good as what his data is? Absolutely. Uh, I challenge, you know, the dude, I know there's a lot of people on this that, that sort a lot of lists, do a thousand of milk plus on DPR and then those type credentials. And it's a really, really short list. I mean, this, this bull being top 50, the breed for type top 50 udders, uh, these can, he's a unicorn. There's just not bulls that do this all the time. And then to add the pole gene in, I think he's again, sort of a game changing kind of bull. Yeah, can you imagine, Kevin, you having the ability to use Luster P, King Doc, and Renegade all at the same time in the kind of herd of cows you're going to have? <laughs> that that just... would be a whale of a herd of cows. I didn't, and uh, like I say, I know there's a herd in Wisconsin. We're using all three, so it's good <laughs> that way. Um, now, we, I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes talking about the graduates this time. As I said, a great day. And, and rather than to have lots and lots of charts and graphs and that stuff, uh, I spent so much time looking at this last week and what or last last night and what i found is is that we have bulls in the top 50 in every category and a lot of them and it doesn't matter if it's the fitness traits the type traits the uh, production traits that's what we're supposed to do as a sire team is make bulls that fit every market and that's really what we're after uh and and it's the the direction of the program we're a global company that needs to meet the, meet the needs of a ton of different producers and that's really what we're trying to do so we had a lot of hard decisions on Tuesday, just of how many bulls to graduate. We could have graduated more, and some of those will come in, in, in April. But we added 12 new additions, and 12, 11 of the 12 bulls are in our top 100 TPI sires. And that was basically the, the metric. Can you be a top 100 TPI bull? On top of that, uh, the one that isn't is a top 25 type bull and a new showcase uh, uh, addition we'll talk about. They're sired by seven different sires. So there's some diversity of pedigree, and again, that's very important. And then the last thing is seven of these bulls that we graduated have sons in our program. Why is that important? Because it solidifies the future that those bulls probably have a good chance or a better chance of making a really good contribution once they get into proven status. So all of those things added up to, to what we felt was a really, really good day on the, on the graduate side. Rick, there was one bull that kind of snuck up on us. So I'm going to let you talk about him first. Well, exactly. A 7H14320 OCD Helix Alphabet. Uh, sometimes it's good to be patient in today's world, and uh, we're not very good at that in the fast-paced world of genetics that we live in. But uh, uh, here's a bull that uh, just good things come to those who wait, right? Um, popular G-Force bull, a bull that sold very, very well during his genomic career, uh, predominantly because of those extreme expectations for production and a bull that's always been really good on sire fertility and, and he's still positive on that sire fertility evaluation. But it's so nice to see a bull uh, come through now with over 100 daughters in this proof. Uh, yield deviations, uh, much like Lionel last time, his yield deviations are would ex suggest that he's maybe got a little upward push in him for, uh, for April as well. Um, but a bull very much in the image of his sire Helix himself, you know, huge combined fat and protein bull, high pounds of fat, protein, nearly 2,200 pounds of milk, beautiful linear profile. Um, and, and you see that in the daughters, you know, he's got, he's kind of really cut out of that very same image as Helix. And that, uh, I think is a very, very positive thing. And, you know, you have these bulls that maybe aren't always at the top of the list as a young bull, but high enough. And fortunately we were able to get alphabet use some. 
uh, as a mating sire. And we'll talk a little bit later, uh, I think, about one of the really, really intriguing young bulls uh, of the breed that is, a, is an alphabet son. So to have him graduate in the top five, you know, I mentioned, uh, you know, renegade luster and doc. And then, then you have a bull uh, like alphabet right there in the top five as well. Uh you know, one of the reasons we get so excited about these high bulls, uh, proven bulls, is that it's a prediction of the future. And when they have offspring, sons and daughters contributing, it just is that much more reliable information to, to know that their offspring are going to live up to expectations. And uh, an alphabet certainly has done that. He certainly does. And the good news is that Jonathan and Alicia being great partners with us, they gave us another one, too. Yep. Yeah. Milford, again, another Helix son, uh, this time a Helix uh, out of the Menas, uh, uh, very good Delta daughter. Next dam's a 92-point snowmobile, goes back to the Mindy Cow family. So another Helix son, very much, again, uh, just a good, solid genomic bull now uh, with over 260 or 261 daughters in his proof has really kind of solidified exactly what he is. Uh, 70 classified daughters, you see that nice linear profile. And a bull, again, we, we talk about traits that we've really focused on, um, you know, leg side view. Uh, we talk about the straightness of the leg and, and the lack of flexibility and mobility. Uh, here we've got a bull that's a point and a half on the set side. So a bull should add some flexibility, some mo mobility to the leg. We look at that intermediate optimum on teat length. He's not going to uh, shorten the teats any more than he needs to. And then, uh, you know, beautiful balanced udders. You can see a couple of daughters pictured on, on your screen. And, and just that, you know, hard top, moderate size, good front-ended cows, rib capacity and structure, uh, and then beautiful udders. So uh, not as extreme a milk bowl. Uh, but certainly a very high component bull. So if you're selecting for high solids, high percent fat, high percent protein, uh, Milford is, is going to do that very, very nicely. Uh, BB on his Kappa casein, A1, A2, uh, just another really strong addition in the top 50 for TPI, uh, in the top 40 for net merit. So a bull that kind of hits all the different indexes because of his desirable combination of traits and a, a really nice uh, additional graduate here um, in our portfolio of Helix Sons. One more from Jonathan Alicia. Well, that was a good day for uh, for our partner herds here in the East Coast, uh, no doubt. And 250H14310, legendary coffee. Um, a legendary son out of an excellent Rubic Rubicon, then an 86-point uh, do doorman, an 89-point snowman, and goes back to the uh, the famous Shottle Chastity cow. So if you like cow families, you like pedigrees, this bull's pedigree is extremely full. Uh, legendary is becoming one of those bulls that never made it back as a proven sire or a graduate. Um, but I love seeing this bull in pedigree and I like them as cows. They're great barn cows. They get better as they mature second and third lactations. Um, and we're seeing him pop up in some, into some pedigrees today, which is not really wow. too surprising when you, when you see how good these cows are. Uh, here's another great component bull, uh, plus 0.24% fat, uh, plus 08% protein. He's a wellness trait specialist. You see those high mastitis resistance uh, scores at plus 3.3 for, for CDBC and 104 on Zoetis. High productive life. Um, and another bull with that pedigree because he is kind of unique and different uh, and easy to use bull, particularly on, you know, frazzled daughters, rocket fire daughters that have that big volume of milk where you want to improve their percentages uh, and, and take care of some fitness and wellness stuff. Um, coffee is another really solid bull for us and, uh, uh, very, very excited to have him in the top 100 on his TPI list, a great fertility bull, uh, bull does so many nice things, a logo maker. You see all those logos, um, just a real solid addition in, in a unique pedigree in coffee. Jumped the gun there a little bit. Cause I was ready to talk on this one. Cause well, why wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> the partners come through in big ways and, and, uh, the next bull here is one of, one of my great partners to work with Sandy Valley, 7H14364, Sandy Valley Isacow. And I don't care how you say his name as long as you find the bull and you guys have, he's been a top 10 sales bull the last 12 months, uh, <clears throat> and gives you confidence that you bought the right bull, um, have had high expectations based on what we've been seeing on this bull. Um, and he comes by naturally. Samurai is a customer satisfaction bull. Out of one of the, the one hand cows here in the in the breed that are one name cows that are genetic contributors and, and eternity has to be in that top five. 
still in the herd, still looks great. I was just there in November. She's 92 points. She's due back. Uh, this is one of the first sons of the cow. There'll be more to come because she's been really influential. And, and, um, and so the, just an amazing cow family. Uh, balanced all the way throughout. Good product of life and fitness. He's 174 on type, a linear you, you like. Uh, A2A2 settles cows. So he's, he's done a lot of things right. And again, these daughters are on the right-hand side. They're just recently pictured. Uh, the one on the top, again, at Mystic Valley and, and a great young cow. And I think what you can expect from his trouble-free cows like we saw in Samurai and, and Good Udders or Melkin Well. Um, and he's going to continue to add a bunch of data. And I, and I still continue to expect good things as deviations look good. So keep an eye on Ice Cacao, but you've been using them, keep using them. The bull that was out for a while came back. Uh, we expected a King Royal to graduate this time, but we held one and graduated one. And that's the bull on the screen, 7H14401K, Reagan Danhoff Cascade. Uh, here's a bull again, top 20 in the breed for utter composite. Two points on type, great components, good fitness. This is a bull whose set data uh, is just uh, outstanding. Every month the new data comes in, it looks better. So he's got 33 scores. You can expect the next 33 will be even better than what we see already. Uh, he's a King Royal son out of a super shot daughter. She's pictured there at the top. The next dam is one of the stars at Sandy Valley or at uh, Gregan's. Uh, she's a 94 point JC daughter. Uh, great, great cow. Traces back to uh, uh, the Larkrest cow family, the Cosmopolitans, the Ramos there, Crimson down to bottom. So, again, you like great cow families. You like great type. You like good linears. Uh, this bull clicks that box. Another bull that we had big expectations on for multitudes of reasons is 7H14451 Big Al. We've got a lot of frazzled sons, but when I was talking earlier about prediction for the future and stability, uh, Big Al was the sire of a pretty influential bull in our program named Game Day. And so as Big Al went, as Game Day was going to go, and the good news is he didn't disappoint us. I didn't think he did based on what we had seen uh, milking. Uh, they're just, again, trouble-free cows, um, frazzled from a Delta, from a super sire. So, again, plant, get, uh, great fitness traits. One of the high productive life bulls in the breed meets the mastitis resistance pro logo. Uh, rare air for net merit in proven bulls. 900 is a big number on, on proven bulls. Um, so he fits all of those. He's been A to A2. So to have this bull come back to graduate status, uh, making really good cows. This white cow is an SSI cow. Just put that, uh, got that photo in this morning. So again, I think he's getting the other ones at Larson Acres in Southern Wisconsin. Uh, I know I've seen some just even in the last 30 days and I like what I see. Glad to see this bull come back to active status. And like I say, when you're game day sire, it helps the whole system. Well, two other bulls here we'll talk about uh, from great partner herd in, in eastern New York from Welcome Stock, 14H1442, Welcome Del Pro. Uh, here's another bull. It's kind of a unique pedigree. He's a samurai son out of a, a very good uh, super shot, then an 83 Jackman, and then a very good graffiti. Um, you see the dam, uh, the black cow on your screen is is the dam, and the, the white cow on the bottom is the, uh, the third dam, the, the very good graffiti daughter. Uh, just a deep, deep wonderful cow family goes back to M Toto Dima, which a lot of people will recognize that name. Um, Del Pro at 93 daughters and 27 herds. Uh, here's another, uh, you know, tremendous wellness trait, fitness trait specialist. He's one of the high productive life and DPR bulls in the breed. He's got very, very desirable casing combinations being A2, A2 and BB. Uh, moderate size cows, which that Dima family tends to give you that moderate size, good strength and substance kind, uh, but not too tall. He's another bull. It's going to improve leg set, add some flexibility and set back into that leg. And uh, just outside of the top 50 overall on TPI. And, you know, again, I love this pedigree because it's so user friendly across a lot of our uh, uh, successful and popular bulls uh, being, you know, Samurai, Super Shot, Jackman, um, you can use them in a lot of different ways, uh, especially to improve overall wellness traits, mastitis resistance, uh, and still maintain really, really respectable production levels at over a thousand of milk in uh, 52 pounds of fat and 49 pounds of protein. Um, but a, a really, really solid uh, new graduate into our accelerated program uh, in Delpro. Uh, 
Goddard. Welcome Goddard again from, from Welcome Stock. Again, another kind of different pedigree bull. Uh, Blowtorch Sun out of a uh, Delta um, that was lost early before she could get classified. Uh, next dam was an 87 point super sire and then an 87 point mano man. So it is a pretty full pedigree when you get back into it in a pedigree that's done some really good things for the breed. Um, this bull has always been, has been a very popular G force bull for us. Uh, he was been a high net merit bull and he's been a, a fertility superstar at over two on sire conception rate to 2.1 here today. Uh, a two, a two sire again, wellness trait specialist, low somatic cell, great mastitis resistance. In a linear profile, it's right kind of down the middle. Uh, he's not going to move you too much, too far one direction or another. He will uh, add a little bit of length to the teat, but you know we've been been preached to that uh, we need to improve our our offering of net merit bulls. Uh, and Goddard definitely is going to deliver that for us. He, he'll be just outside of the top thirty for proven bulls at eight sixty three net merit. And uh, I think a bull with that kind of fertility casings, positive yield deviations, uh, a really, really strong addition to us um, in that wellness trait net merit line uh, to continue on with. So before we talk about next gen bulls, Rick, you can see the questions. I can't. So what do we got out there from our crowd? Yeah, I think we've got most of our questions answered thus far. There was a question uh, from Brian Anderson about Renegade and with him having such an impressive proof uh, equivalent to that of a desirable young bull, uh, would you go back and use him as a sire of sons again? Remember that Elevation's last son was his best. Um, and that's a great point, Brian. That, that definitely was the case. Uh, I think we're in a little different time and era with genomic uh, selection to be able to identify who that best one is. Um, if by chance uh, there's a high renegade son out there that is higher than everything else, uh, would we try to acquire and bring that bull in? I think absolutely. But we already have uh, 50 renegade sons in our system. Uh, we think some of those are really, really special. Um, we have 50 grandsons uh, out of Renegade or Renegade is the maternal grandsire. So this bull's ha having a major is going to have a major impact on our program. And, you know, just like Planet, uh, just like Mogul, when those two bulls were young, they were outcrossed. They were different. Um, Renegade is the same thing all over again. Uh, it <laughs> won't be too long that we're going to be looking for Renegade free pedigrees. Uh, and, and that's just a testament to great genetics and the bull delivering uh, but uh, I don't know that we go back and aggressively use him now, but um, for making cows and uh, in improving bottom line and herds, uh, he's absolutely a must use bull. And we'll talk about some renegade sons here uh, in the next couple of segments um, that I, we think are, are kind of the next generation of, of what renegade offers. And, and maybe it's hard to go higher, hard to be better than daddy when daddy's that good. Uh, but we think a couple of these might have a shot. Yeah. So good morning, Brian, because I think it's tomorrow in Australia. So glad you could join us. And <clears throat> I'd echo what Rick says. I think the biggest thing is, is looking through those renegade sons and saying, which one's fallen under the radar screen? I'm going to touch on a couple of those through some sons, but he's a big, he's a big influence. So anything else out there, Rick? No, I think we've got everything okay. answered either in our presentation thus far or uh, replied to on the board. So. Okay. Well, obviously, as you can see, next gen is going to be, we're going to talk about a couple bulls and next gen next, but I think this next bull, I think is going to be probably is uh, the biggest news of the, of the week in the next gen program. And again, want to thank all of those that are, that are members. Uh, the, the program continues to grow, exceeds our expectations. And, and this next bull, maybe we'll get a few more signups even as well. And that's basically the highest bull in the world that you can buy semen of. And that is 7H15821 Frostbite. Um, we went back and looked on Tuesday to see uh, the, the highest bull in 2020 uh, is Frostbite. There is no bull born in, in that birth year that's, that's higher than him for net merit, for cheese merit. Uh, so he debuts out of the chute as one of the high, high bulls of the breed for those credentials. Uh, again, bred it one of the great partner herds of us, uh, the Grunis family in, in, up in uh, Richmond, Minnesota. Uh, the beauty of this bull is he's T. Spruce top and bottom. Granada is a uh, Nugent son bred by T. Spruce that goes back into the Menas again. And then uh, from and then on the bottom side, a Lionel daughter. I've seen the daughter. Uh, she is due here this winter. Uh, been a tremendous, uh, uh, successful flush cow. And then a Samurai followed by a, 
um, uh, out to spring and then back into the Ramos jelly cow family from your neck of the woods, Rick. I mean, then that family jet set to beer. Uh, there's a Facebook back there that was a full sister to those bulls. So he's a maternal line bull. But again, as you said earlier, got to be patient sometimes to wait for the data to catch up. And and 13196 was a great flush cow. Like I say, she's due late spring. Uh, it's actually still being worked in IVF. But when you look at the credentials of this bull, be this extreme and the combination of DPR, fitness traits, and 160 CFP, clicks the boxes for mastitis resistance, breed leader for DWP, A2A2, uh, that's a, a powerful, powerful combination that this bull is going to offer. And the other thing is, is he will not be 15 months old until next week. So at 14 and a half months available, semen's available. Some I'm sure has already left the dock since Tuesday here um, and available in the next gen program. And that's the beauty of this program is getting uh, this semen to the field uh, in a quicker manner for you as our customers to be able to use. So excited about uh, what he offers. Now, one of the things that Rick and I talked about this morning is, is everybody sometimes looks at a linear like this and says, oh my gosh, why are you so excited about a bull that's left-handed linear? And this bull fits for markets that are asking for their cows to not be as big. But I wanted to illustrate what we do with a bull like this as a, as a sire team, because every mating we make have mothers as well. And this bull has so many positive traits so if I take this bull, and this is just a couple of examples. So you look at that minus almost 172 on, on stature, and then you mate him to certain females and get high parent averages, well in the high thousands in that mare, three, uh, way in the 3,000s of TPI, and then you get that back to the center. You have the right in the one on the right there out of Espanola. That's a, a Taos daughter that's uh, out of a, one of the most influential cows at Sandy Valley at the moment. Got a high likelihood of making an A2A2 BB sire, uh, 150 CFP, over a point on other composite. So it isn't always just about what that bull looks like. It's what's out there that can get used on. Uh, what can this bull get used on to make the right combination? And that's what we find this bull so appealing with those production traits, fitness traits, uh, merit traits. We can use this bull to move the needle of the breed forward. And, you know, we just got done answering, talking with Brian's thoughts on, you know, Renegade and those kind of things. This bull on these Renegade sons, the, the Tauses, the Parfects, the Conways, those early daughters that we're already mating, this bull fits them like a glove and gets those daughters to give us really appealing traits. So I don't know if you got anything else to add on Frostbite, Rick, but he's he's definitely a very, very exciting bull. Well, you know, the one thing I would add, Kevin, a lot of times, you know, we're, we're classifying cows or young two-year-olds and, and the comment will be made, you know, she's wrong in all the right places and she'll get better. And that's a little bit uh, of Frostbite. To, you see a lot of traits on the left and we automatically assume that that means bad. But, you know, to me, when you get back to the, the bottom of that linear chart for T placement, and the fact that those teats and rear teats do have some space, do have some width, that's wrong in the right right way for me when we look at trying to improve the, the contribution of planet and, and, and mogul and how close those teats got, particularly rear teats. You know, here's a bull that can really, really do the right thing uh, by having a negative number and in, in, in improving that teat position. So. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to have to to work too hard uh, for people to find this bull and sell this bull, but he's a good teaching bull and a good example uh, of trying to educate ourselves on what these linears represent and, and what the results can be when when utilized properly and corrected mating. Yep, absolutely. But another bull that in this next gen program, I think you better take the lead on Crusher. But boy, what a great day this bull had. Yeah, and if you hadn't found him yet, uh, you may be better find him now. Um, you know, Crusher is another, we talk about trying to be a little different and do some things unique. You look at this bull's pedigree, uh, being a Calvary son out of a legendary, mentioned him or referred to him a little bit ago, popping up into some pedigrees here, then a very good Joe Super, and, and then the old Mogul Mariah uh, pictured on the bottom side of your screen. Um, Cal Crusher's dam was just a really, really good cow. She's the cow in the upper portion of your screen there, 86.2 year old, um, that just is, is what I've seen in a lot of legendaries. Beautiful balance and symmetry, awesome udders, and it's nice to see him offer that diversity into our current pedigrees uh, with significantly elevated uh, genetic evaluations. 
So with all of that diversity and uniqueness of what he brings to the table and where you can use him, uh, he's a big time fat improver at 122 pounds of fat. He's what we're the direction we're going in a lot of ways. You see that HHP dollars, herd health profit index dollars is is way up there at uh, 1032. Mastitis resistance is bought, checked, but the thing that people are going to find is that plus three point six <laughs> SDR. Uh, yep. You know, it's it's one thing as we say it all the time. You know, genetics on paper are one thing, but it doesn't do you any good unless you get a pregnancy and a live calf. Well, this bull's going to make pregnancies, yep. and. Uh, you know, we've used them. Uh, I, was pr- I was pretty excited to just do a little look. And we have five sons over 3,000 uh, TPI between 3,000 and 3,073. Um, we've got 10 sons over uh, 1020 net merit, as high as 1089. And most of those calves were born here in June and in July. So by next summer, uh, fall, uh, you're going to see some really, really cool crusher sons uh, become available as well. So this bull has been under the radar just a little bit. Um, he maybe shouldn't have been, but for people looking for different and with that plus 3.6, the, uh, he is now on the radar, uh, in a, an exciting bull for us. Yeah. And I was most excited that I found two really, really high, uh, maternal sisters to frostbite by crusher and the female file last night. So we had worked, Frostbite's mother to crush her and, and got some really exciting females. But this bull, they were going to move into the regularly available genomic young sires, and Crusher's got a brother that's not too far behind him and had a good day too. Yeah, Trooper, 14H15179. So we talk about the positive influence of Renegade, you know, and you guys know Parfect, you know Conway, Ahead, and Taos. Those are the, the celebrities of the system. But here's a bull in Trooper that's, again, been a little under the radar but with the positive proof that Renegade had, uh, took some nice climbs, went up 45 TPI points this time, went up 45 net merit dollars. Um, you see that HHP circled again of the direction that we're going with uh, mastitis and overall health, high combined fat and protein bull. And again, that that unique pedigree, um, you know, here's a bull, uh, Renegade, legendary Joe Super from a great cow family. Uh, and another bull that carries on that tradition of high fertility, uh, plus 1.6 SCR, um, light crusher, uh, probably not under the radar for much longer, but uh, our bullet had a really nice day for us and, and uh, we're pretty excited about it. And we have some trooper sons uh, as well that are right at the top of our list as far as uh, sire father potential and bulls that we'll be utilizing and, and you'll see in the, in uh, 12 months from now. So uh, Bullet, uh, very, very excited and had a great day for us. Well, you said there was an alphabet, son. You better tell us about Magnum because the world probably has found him already, but if they didn't, you better tell them. Well, yeah, I don't think it takes too long to find 7H15839 OCD alphabet Magnum. Uh, Magnum is uh, like that patience, right? He was <laughs> he was high enough. Uh, an alphabet has come along and, and steadily improved. This bull didn't make a lot of changes from his August proof uh, to his his uh, December proof, but what he did was he actually improved his relative rank as those bulls around him kind of drifted or went backward because this pro- this proof from pedigree solidified itself with daughter data. Um, he actually uh, improved his overall rankings in the breed. Uh, he's 110 pounds of fat, 61 pounds of protein, so big CFP bull, uh, high productive life, uh, DPR fertility index bull. He's an A2 sire, but the thing to me that gets it makes him so special is then you look at that pedigree. So alphabet, newly proven bull, uh, dams a, an 83 point Jared that uh, was uh, not on your screen, but she did go 83 on her first score and a cow that has a very good written all over with time and development. Uh, next dam's a very good Burley, then a very good Delta, then a 92 Snowmobile. So entirely si- uh, progeny proven sire stack behind this bull. And uh, then you look at what's not in that pedigree. Uh, I don't see Frazzled. I don't see Legacy. I don't see Game Day. I don't see Renegade. So, uh, you know, bull is just wide open to use and complement all of those pedigrees. So uh, newly released in the G-Force uh, program, uh, publicly available and uh, both conventional and sex product. And I think a bull, it's going to be one of the really, really popular new additions to our program in Magnum. And if I had a dollar, Rick, for every phone call I've got in the last four months of when is Parfect actually going to be available, 
um, you and I could have a pretty good dinner. I know that. And the good news is, is the wait is over. For those of you that have been waiting for Parfect to leave next gen, the, the time is now. Um, Parfect had a marvelous day again this time. It, with Renegade having a good day, it just solidifies things. So don't need to tell you a lot about the bull because, again, most folks have found him. But, again, sort of like I said on Luster P, go out and do a bunch of sorts and take two on udders, two on feet and legs, thousand of milk, plus on DPR, A2, A2, and BB, and it is a really short list of bulls. I love this bull. He's had a huge influence. Uh, his dam is is the bell of the barn at Seamers, uh, one of the great, and, again, a five, she, we call her 27856, but – you know, she's on this list of five cows in the breed of, of high influence that are crossover cows, and she's definitely it. And, you know, we've got multiple sons. Uh, Parsley's a brother. We actually have two Hanan sons out of this cow coming for showcase. So it's an influential cow family. And the other good part about this bull is his sire fertility continues to improve. He's well over one. And that's sometimes what happens with these next-gen bulls. They start lower, and then as they get bred, uh, some of those early IVFs get maybe not uh, easily uh, omitted, and, and you see that, and all of a sudden the bulls settle in cows, and this bull definitely does. But you all know the story in Parfect. You now order semen on him. Your, your sales reps are going to have him, so he's out of the gate. But a bull that, again, when Ryan asked about Renegade, you know, Taos to me is one of these bulls that's maybe a little bit under the radar screen of his ability to make extreme good production with extreme dpr he's one of the highest dpr bulls in the breed that renegade son so now we're already marketing his sons and zythos is one of those bulls again that we thought was maybe an under the radar screen bull that we should talk about again as rick mentioned high d hhp dollars mastitis resistance good combined fat protein two points on udders and and bb on kappa casein uh this is a uh, uh, his granddam, this is an outside daughter's pictured on the screen. She's a, an 88-point cow now, and then a great cow family. She lives in a robotic dairy in Wisconsin. The mother's already 83, sired by Big Al, so now having another set of, of uh, proven genetics in this pedigree. Definitely a bull that I thought uh, we should mention uh, that, that's out there and, and publicly available and, and quite an interesting bull. The other one that uh, in that same HHP theme is Supreme. And uh, again, a bull that checks a lot of boxes uh, with two points on udders, high HHP, you know, carbon copy, but a different pedigree again. He's a Maximus son. That's game day's brother, his older brother, who incidentally was the highest calf that we had at Select Sires born in 2018. And so now his, his son's coming out uh, and he's going to get a proof here in 2020. But he clicks all these boxes again. But what I like about this bull is that he's got a Husky dam. And we didn't have enough time to tell you about Husky, who will be released as a proven sire, one of those new graduates in January. But Husky is the number one productive life bull in the breed, or DPR bull in the breed, excuse me. And so this is her picture there, great young cow, uh, going to be a high-scoring cow someday. And then the frazzled Fandango cow that we uh, partnered with. Uh, at, with Spencer Hackett and, and just a great, great pedigree. So another uh, bull with a, a little easy to use kind of bull being Maximus Husky Frazzled, Renegade Free, does a lot of things right. And then before we move into showcase, I'm giving Rick a few minutes off here so he can catch his breath. As I did put this bull in this morning and sorted list yesterday, uh, 250H15525 McDonald P, been popular, but for good reason. This bull is the number one red and pulled bull in the breed. And again, you try to set some parameters and say, I want bulls that are two on type. And I want a bull that's top 30 of the breed for udder composite. And I want him to be good on mastitis. And I want him to rank. And I want him to, to do all those things right. This bull does that. Uh, I'm really excited to see some of his sons getting born very, very soon. We use this bull as a sire father. Uh, Dam is 86. Going to move up and score at April Day. Uh, and goes back to Mighty P's cow family. So for your for the for the polled enthusiast, uh, Mighty P was a very popular bull. This is the same maternal line. So this bull had a really good day because there isn't anybody close to him when it comes to red and polled. So with that, Rick, any other questions on our screen? Uh, looks like one just popped up from uh, Tyrone Aho. As in your opinion, what are the most overlooked traits when making sire selections? Um, 
I'm not sure there's too many traits that get overlooked. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah. we, we have so many of them. Uh, it's it's hard to remember them all. But I I guess if I was to throw one right now, and it's it's not overlooked on what we're doing today, but I think in the out there in the population, it might be. And, that, and that's mastitis, um, mastitis resistance. Um, when you look at, we talked about this, I think, in, in previous uh, Facebook Lives, but when you look at the amount of uh, sex semen and the amount of beef semen and, and limiting future herd replacements, uh, the tendency is going to be for a to milk a older herd of cows, which older cows produce more, uh, should be your most profitable cows when you're in their third, fourth, fifth lactations. Um, but that's only going to be the case if they're not in the sick pen and uh, that they don't have mastitis and they make it to third, fourth and fifth lactation. So um, I think we, we can show some pretty uh, impressive genetic audits in, in the, uh, the power of that trait and in how well it does work in, in, in providing an increased mastitis resistance. And uh, I feel like we've talked about it a lot, but I'm not sure that um, maybe that's a major part of a lot of selection traits right now in, in the buying public. Right. I, I would agree 100 percent. And then I guess the other one, if our friends, uh, my Italian friends are listening, I was just over there. Rick, now we have to make four B. BB is not good enough. Now we need four Bs. They need to be beta lac BB and uh, kappa casein BB. And we have some. So that's good. I'm going to talk about one in a minute. But um, the good no. the good thing is, is that's uh, that's job security for us because we still have a lot of work to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Never done. Never done. So with that, uh, we're going to finish up with uh, some high type offerings and obviously showcases near and dear to me. It was maybe one of the greatest years in showcase that we've had in 2021 um, with uh, the success in the show ring, premier sire banners at World Air Expo and both the heifer show and the, and the cow show and in Warrior and Diamondback. And, and so this, this program continues to grow. We, sire, we coined it this year, Balance. I can't accentuate any more clearly than that one word. It's it's all about balance. And that's what we're trying to make. And so the good news in showcases, I said we had one bull well, not in the top 100, but he's in the top 25 TPI or for PTAT. And that's backflip. Uh, I've been waiting for this bull for a long time. Uh, it was always one of my favorites. Um, one of the few high octane sons we were able to make. Um, and when I, when I worked in Eastern Canada and one of my favorite stops was always going to Farm Jacobs and seeing Brittany and she's still alive and she's Canadian cow of the year and she's 96 points and she's made all these uh, great, great cows. And when we had the opportunity for her son, I, I jumped at the opportunity. And now with 48 scored, he's 256 on type. That's top uh, 25 of the breed for proven bulls. He settles cows. He makes winners. Uh, that one there, that two-year-old that was up in Canada this year, won the summer junior two-year-old class. Uh, Backflip himself has a very famous sister named High Octane Babe uh, that did very, very well last year. So excited to bring this bull in. He does have a limited availability. The bull unfortunately had an injury in, in pretty recently. Uh, and so, you know, we've got product available, but there'll be a finite window because uh, – Unfortunately, the bull's not with us anymore, but I've been waiting to graduate this bull quite a while, and I was really glad that we were able to do that. Um, Warrior, as I mentioned, you know, one of the premier sires of the breed this year. Uh, dare say that there's few bulls that have made more nominations, both red and black, than Warrior this year, or it's a pretty short list. Uh, it was premier sire of the heifer show everywhere. First heifer there above the trait block is supreme champion heifer at World Dairy Expo. Um, you know, you know the credentials of the bull. The good news is this bull's starting to have daughters. He doesn't have a tight proof yet, but you will not be disappointed in the set data that's come in since the cutoff. It looks great. He's got milk and daughters like the one there that was second at Madison this year. I've seen several of them. Uh, he's not going to disappoint. and We know he can make heifers. But as I was looking at this bull and what we don't talk about with Warrior is he's a mastitis resistant pro bull. We've got several showcase bulls that excel in mastitis resistance. Can't take a cow to the show if she lost a quarter. And so mastitis resistance, again, is important. But maybe even more important, I've got Mark Ten Warrior as well. He excels in Zoetis calf wellness traits. What do you want a show calf to do? Get off to a good start and not get sick. And he's got great scores for livability, for scours, for respiratory. 
that's probably the mark of a bull that can make the winners. And, and so he looks to be a progeny proven graduate. And I'm very excited what his data could look like in April, but he continues to excel. And then, as I said, need four B bulls, Rick. And the good news is, is we have one. And his name is Hanans. He is A2A2. He's BB Kappa casing. He's BB Beta Lac. But not only that, he's basically one of the highest type bulls in the breed uh, at 3.92, continues to get better. Uh, his sire Excalibur was that King Royal son that we maybe thought was going to graduate this week. And he may see, I got a good feeling on him in April as well. A bull that this bull makes crossover cattle. He has got some of the highest type females in the breed. And in fact, so far, what I find the three highest in the world are Hanan's calves, females. One in Italy that I saw on a trip three weeks ago, one in Wisconsin, and the other one at Seamers. And so this cow family continues to hit. This is his mother. She's, again, one of those great cows that can do it all. She's basically the highest type cow in combination with high GTPI. And that's what the bull does. He's a crossover bull. He's making sons, folks, that are 3,000 GTPI and almost three on type. And we got a lot of them. We got more to come yet. And so I'm really excited about what Hanans is going to add to our program as a crossover sire. And now he's got an SCR, and that's positive. Um, if you haven't used this bull and you're looking for what is the next maybe dockish kind of bull, I think it's it's not. Um, Rick, you got two left to go. They're from your area. You're the no name you the new king of type on these two bulls. But tell us about Cadillac. Well, Cadillac's a bull. Uh, the next two bulls, Cadillac and Homecoming, seems like we uh, talk about one. We talk about both uh, bred and born in the same part of the world in eastern New York. We talked about both these bulls four months ago. I said, be patient. Um, you know, they can't meet their demand. Uh, they're, they're young bulls. The semen production hasn't caught up to the demand. It'll get there. And I think the one good thing about uh, Cadillac today is uh, he is uh, – got up to speed on semen production. He's off allocation. And uh, now we have a nice new uh, factoid to sell this bull with and that he's plus 1.1 on SCR. So if you weren't able to get that early semen, now you know <laughs> you, tighten can, up again. you can get it. And uh, But you know it's going to be fertile, good quality semen. Uh, we talked about one name cows. Uh, Cadillac's Grand Dam is cleavage. Uh, the world, world around knows cleavage, the 95 point mogul. Um, but you know we love this doc son. Uh, great confirmation, linear uh 960 pounds of milk um but now new information uh high fertility bull to go along with all those other positives as well that uh, he's getting bred to some awfully good cows so i can't wait till those calves hit the ground and uh we get to really see what kind of special special in individuals he's going to carve out because i think yeah the bull has uh, all the the ability to uh, to make that truly special kind when I saw your client, Jeff King, over the weekend, I, I, I mentioned to him how many famous cows I see in Holstein International are bred to Cadillac. And I said, that's a big pressure. The pressure's on. But uh, uh, just one of the absolute favorites. And then yeah. we'll finish with homecoming. We'll finish with homecoming. And we talk about, uh, you know, one name famous cows. This bull might be the grand champion of one name famous cows. You talk about his dam, Habitan, Grand Dam, Hazel halo back in that pedigree delia back in that pedigree the three cows pictured on the right hand side of your screen this bull um, is bred for pure breed leading confirmation and type through all those great mothers behind him uh, the spartacus son continues to be one of our highest combined type and utter composite bulls um, you talk about desirable caseins a2a2bb here's another bull we said hey be patient he's a young bull He'll catch up. He has caught up. Semen supply is now good and improving. Uh, and just like Cadillac came through with a really solid evaluation at plus 1.5 on SCR. So um, you know now that the semen you're going to get is going to do its job and make you that pregnancy. And, and you know, we want to make uh, uh, great calves. And you kind of stole my thunder. Uh, just like on Warrior, you know, livability on calves scour resistance respiratory resistance this bull is extremely good on those calf wellness traits as well so you know we're going to get a pregnancy we're going to get a live calf and that calf is going to be healthy all those little extra things um and we talk about all the stuff we can select for today uh there's so much data and information and, and this bull just continues to check all those nice boxes and uh, uh bull we're just extremely extremely excited about and another bull 
we've used as a mating sire and uh, some pretty cool young calves uh, on the ground, genomic tested and uh, some tough decisions to be made on which ones are going to make the, make yeah. the ride to Plain City, Ohio. But uh, Well, Junior Junior just made one, one of the early homecoming calves out of a Luster P dam. This is what I wanted to finish with because we were talking about Luster P that is pulled, sired by homecoming, three points on type. Um, so that's when you can tie all that together, it, it's, uh, those are the, the fun things. And the little mad scientist sits in his desk and then he goes out to the barn and he comes up with those kind of combinations. So kudos to Jordan for doing that. But, uh, like I say, we got a couple minutes left, so certainly open to more questions again. So ask those if you, if you've got any, and we'd be happy to answer them. Yeah, we're, uh, we're caught up on questions on the board right now. So Unless somebody pops in here real quick, uh, once again, a miracle between, between the two of us to get something like this done. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're under, under we're, 60, we're minutes under 60 minutes is uh, truly amazing because uh, our phone calls is... don't go this quickly. So Right. No, absolutely. So, no, and, and then just on behalf of all of us folks, uh, again, thank you for your support of Select Sires uh, across the globe. Uh, we wish you the happiest of holidays. Merry Christmas. Appreciate everything that you do. And um, looking forward to a very uh, exciting 2022. And uh, so stay safe out there. Uh, if you got any questions, we're always available. And, and thank you once again. So with that, we're going to see a Renegade video to finish out the afternoon. Thank you, folks. Merry Christmas, guys. I'm Mark Kern, I'm Art Program Manager for Select Sires. The Renegade Daughter Group has been the most exciting daughter group that I've seen since my five years in the sire department. Uh, Renegades come along at uh, the time in the breed where we were telling us uh, we had some issues with mobility. He's made a correct leg set, they move, they're very mobile. He's also, we're seeing a tremendous high wide rear udders in all the daughters, and that's what's really excited me. They look definitely like young cows that are producing a lot of milk. The other nice thing that we've seen on Renegade is he gets the correct teat size and correct teat placement back on the udder. That again is a very strong positive for the breed. I'm Megan Atherman and I work at Genetic Futures. We really like the Renegade daughters. Um, they're some of the nicest cows that we've seen come through the art program. I've been with the art program for five years here at Genetic Futures and they're my favorite cows that I've seen, Kevin. I really like their udders, nice uttered cows, nice framed cows, um, milking well as well. We know this bull was named uh, Holstein International Outcross Sire of the Year in 2019, so he's a very easy bull to use back on a lot of pedigrees. Uh, it just makes him real exciting. We've got a lot of renegade sons, and now seeing the renegade daughters calve in uh, just adds to that excitement.